What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the EA FC Career Mode, it's episode number 30, returning today on the back of the season opener, where of course we moved into Power Core, our new stadium, uh, we made three new signings, James Justin returning, Luton born and bred, Alcaraz coming in for the second most expensive fee in club history after Malik last season, and of course Vidigal arriving on a free transfer after his release from Stoke City, uh, we sold Galini, we sold Nico Williams, we sold a few of our youngsters as well, which means that we're month and half to go until the window shuts 63.5 million still to work with get in loser we're going shopping and to be honest I, I i think first order of business is probably pick up that right back we've been looking for um obviously i've got some fantastic suggestions for you guys in the comments still i i, I really like divine though like I, I i really feel as though this move would be ideal for both him and us and really everyone involved he's at kaa again in belgium and I feel like it's time for him to make the step up now. He's approaching the prime of his career, 23 years old, versatile, 81 rated, wants to be in that Netherlands senior team and play European football in a top five league. I mean, I'd say out of all of these players here, this one probably fits the bill and would be most realistic based on the player's situation and our situation as well. I'm, I'm picking him up, man. It's time to come to a top five league. I don't think I've actually ever used Wrenchy Boy before. Maybe I have. But uh, I can't remember me doing so. But this just seems like the ideal fit for me. The others that are at clubs that are probably considered bigger than ours, I would say. Um, and they're going to want a lot of money, KA again. Wow, okay, fair enough. All right. They don't want to be held to ransom, despite the fact he's playing outside of what's considered the top five European league. Um, but again, I, I would say this is the ideal fit, really. I mean, surely, 23 years old, 81 rated. Got to make a step up, mate. Well, if the deal does come off, it'll be a, uh, a club record fee of 30 million. And it's what KA again have agreed to as well. 30 million. A lot of money, but again, I think it just makes sense, really. Yep, I think based on his career path within the game, this just makes sense. If he was playing in a top five European league for a European side, I wouldn't have signed him. If he was still at Ajax, I wouldn't have signed him. But right now, KA again, I think it's time for him to make the move to a big European league and get himself into the European football as well. Divine is in. It is a 30 million pound Five-year deal, 45 grand a week, and really pleased to have this guy, man, because five-star week for high-medium work rates, really rapid, and, and to be fair, all across the board, very good stats, both when going forward and defensively as well. So yeah, buzzing with that, I'll get a high defensive work rate as quick as I can, and he'll definitely be a starter in our back four. Perfect sign to kick off here, even for a club record fee. So Pendix Spore, uh, I want to sign Jack Goodwin. I'd quite like to wait. And see if I can possibly get him to, uh, to a football league side, if I can, though. And West Ham won alone at Pewter, our, uh, our young goalkeeper, which I'm totally fine with because he needs the game time as well. In fact, if I do loan him out, I'll only have two first-team goalkeepers. So what I might do, I've seen a few free agent goalkeepers available. And I, I, I must say, one I think would be a great fit for us is Stefan Ortega. Uh, Ortega, of course, moving on from Bielefeld to Manchester City. And he was the reason why Man City won the treble. He came in and in his first year, they won the treble together. Um, maybe I'm stretching it a little bit here. But I think him staying in English football, coming down to Luton, though, I, I really like that. I'm going to bring him in. I mean, we're seeing it more and more nowadays. You know, senior players on free transfers, aren't we? You know, Jesse Lingard signed with Forrest on a one-year deal. Barkley signed with Luton on a one-year deal. They just signed Andros Townsend, actually. I don't even think that is a one-year deal. I think it's even shorter than a year's deal. Uh, Johnny Evans returning to Manchester United, one-year deal. So you see it a lot nowadays. You know, players that are in the twilight of their careers getting a one-year contract to see whether they're still worth it or not. So, yeah, Ortega in, and uh, again, just a, just a backup for Muric, just like Galini was last year. But, again, I'd say reasonably realistic, I would say. So, we can't sell him for, like, five, six mil next season. We're not five-star now, are we? I just want to check this and make sure. No, not even close. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest. And, um, yeah, uh, so what have we got now? 30, is it 30 mil? Yeah, just under 30 mil. I'm still thinking what I'd really like is a class DM. Uh, that, to me, would be the, the next vision to look at here. Uh, but the, the targets I, I'm quite keen on, whilst they are still affordable... I know, Bakayoko is still on my shortlist. Um, I, I, I don't know whether I want to spend all of my remaining money on just a one player. I've seen so many comments for Calvin Phillips, and guys, believe me, I, I love the idea of him resurrecting his career, but the truth is, 
He's on a lot of money. And I know he's starting to put players on slightly higher contracts, but we've still got no one on even half of what Calvin Phillips is on. Our highest earners are on 45 grand a week each. So, yeah, unless he's willing to take a major pay cut, which I, I doubt he would, let's be honest here. Uh, yeah, I don't think that deal is going to uh, gonna come off, to be honest. And that is confirmation. He's off to West Ham for a year. So one of the benefits, by the way, of uh, loaning a player within your division is that you can then check their stats for the full domestic competitions within the season. Uh, so obviously, if you, you loan a player out to a, uh, to a country, uh, you won't be able to check their stats because it still shows that we're competing in those competitions. But of course, he can't because... I mean, James is in Belgium, so how can he compete in the Premier League or the Carabao Cup, for example? But Peter will be able to see his stats uh, in those competitions and whether he plays. And so it's one of the benefits of uh, loaning your players out within the same division. Um, so, yeah, we still we still got a little bit of money, but uh, I don't I don't really know what to do at the moment. I'm, I'm not wanting to spend it all on one player. That's the thing. I want to be very selective here. Well, speaking of players that can add depth to the team and be available on a free, I do like this one. I know he had his falling out of Mourinho, but I believe they patched it up. We're in the Europa League this year. He won the Conference League with Roma. The long throw trait, you know, I love that as well. And really versatile. I think Rick Karsdorp on a one or two year deal would be a good signing for us. Yep, versatility is the name of the game with this guy. He can play literally anywhere. And I quite like it as well. You know, senior Dutch international can be a good mentor and help our young Dutch international, Renchi, settle in on that right hand side. Rick Karsdorp is in 31 years old, two year deal, 40 grand a week. And again, guy can literally fill in anywhere where required, which for us is really handy. Playing in Europe, small squad size, that is exactly what we need. So this fits us like a glove. Ah, well, it's not an English club, but uh, an MLS side wanting to take Goodwin. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that deal there. So I think what we're going to do, we've got uh, just a few days to go till the season open. I think I'm going to uh, postpone any new signings or sales and see how we're looking after that. Yep, he's off to, uh, to Texas and uh, we're off to Palace for the first game. Yep, first game, and it's actually at home, not away, but it's not at a new power court, because just like the previous FIFA, uh, the stadium isn't ready for when you start a season. So for those curious, if you are doing your own RTG and you've just got yourself a new stadium, if it's not available for your first home game, don't worry. I freaked out the first time I saw it. I thought I'd done something wrong, but basically, it just takes an extra game before you can play at it. So yeah, it's not ready yet. But even so, uh, Palace at home, come on, Luton. Yeah, I remember the, uh, the first time... I uh, I upgraded my uh, my stadium. I was like, "What? Where's my new ground? It's ridiculous! I've been like 20 minutes designing it." And then uh, my comment section were like, uh, "Doxy boy, yeah, you just gotta wait. Just give it a day. You know, just <laughs> just give it a game. Next one, it'll be ready. Don't worry about it." Uh, it was like it was a panic moment though, because I thought I'd done something completely wrong. There's Adebayo back to Divine. Long will take over. There's Cox in the middle. Oh, well wide. Obviously, Palace went up last season uh, alongside Berlin. Oh, by the way, for those of you who wondered who won the playoffs, it was indeed Forest. So the top three who dominated last year, uh, all promoted to the... Um... Oh, see you later, mate. Oh, I just couldn't finish the move off. We'll get it back. And Cocksmith. Good save, Dean Henderson. Yeah, it was the, uh, the top three all promoted. So Forest did go up as well uh, in the end. Oh, that was naughty. Such a shame we're going to finish that move off there. That's got to be yours, Ryan. All day, mate. All done. And we shall try and get him down the flank if we can. Now Duke. Now Cox. Worked inside. Really well done that. Can I squeeze long through? I can. He's got the pace. Cool as you like. He's still got the exciting prospect. Not being upgraded to potentially special yet. But you know what? He's special in our hearts. This dude, man. So good. And, you know, it did take me a while to sort of finishing out with him. I think I was just snatching at shots a little bit, being a bit too quick. But now, being a lot more composed, taking my time, and that is paying off. First goal scorer of the season. It is long, and it is 1-0. Yes, Wayne Kiernan. And Cox, ooh, dispossessed and stays down as well. Looks hurt there, young man. That's a worry. I highly doubt that would be just a bruise. I, might, I don't normally take players off when they're injured. I like to keep them out there like I'm Tom Thibodeau. But uh, uh, I think at half time, I don't want a Derek Rose situation. You know, my star youngster getting screwed over for his entire career. I'm, I'm, I'm playing it safe. I'm taking him off. No tips tonight. 
you know, taking him off at a break. Alcaraz coming on to make his debut alongside Renchi. Oh, I absolutely hate. Oh, before I went in, sign in. I absolutely hate those type of attacks. Those slow kind of. We're just going to casually work our way inside here. It's going to squeeze in front of like. I just can't defend it. I literally, I cannot seem to defend those attacks there. But um, even so, yeah, Alcaraz on. And um, let's see what he's made of. Last chance. He's got to defend this and we'll get an opening day with it, a win. But instead, Muric does enough. And again, great double save right at the death to ensure. If we defend this corner, we'll hold on to an opening day victory. Dues for each, just hoof it, mate, and that is going to do it. 1-0 against the newly promoted side at home. It's not the most convincing of starts to a season, but you know that saying, a win is a win. We'll take it. Technically, our final game at Kenilworth Road, we will take the win. And for once, my medical team did not leak uh, the, uh, the injury details to the press before the final whistle. Uh, don't worry about it, guys. We, uh, we gave a disciplinary. Uh, how bad is that injury for, uh, for Cocksmith? Oh, no! Well, we got the win, but at what cost? It's the one player we can't afford to get an injury to as well due to his lack of, well, current overall. That's a that's a big blow, that man. It's not disastrous, but it's not great either. Well, it turns out Alcaraz will be starting in this team after all, and it turns out that Cox won't be starting in the end, uh, albeit not due to uh, to form. But, uh, but injury, that's gut. It's the one player we can't really afford to get injured, man. Still, one of those things, uh, but it does make me think, do we need another CM before this window slams shut for extra depth now that Cox has gone down? Well, let's see how we're looking after the next game, and now we're at the new look power court for the following one as we welcome West Ham to our new home. It's looking good, man. It's looking good. Again, keep the comments coming in. I don't know if this is the right stadium to use, but uh, for now, a starter power court. I think it looks okay. Oh, that's a heck of a touch to get away from Renshi. Struggling to catch up. He's not slow, but he's just absolutely blitzed past me. And we're a goal down in 10 minutes. That was ridiculous, man. The pace to get away from what is not a slow fullback was ridiculous. Not quite how I would have started the new era off, but do you know what? We came up before. We can do it again. And with Caduce. Holds off his man. Tackling is so difficult in this year's game, isn't it? Great stop by Muric. Didn't know much about it, but even so, as, as Malik goes on the run, not quite what I want to see, but you know what? It's quite a good run here from the centre half, so fair play. It's led to a chance, and it's dispossessed by Ben Johnson. It's got to be cut out, and it is. And, and Bios is on half, dinking and jinking and moving away. He's got Gabe on the right hand side here. Can I just wait for that man to come across? Come on, meet me, meet me, meet me. Because Gabe's going to be free for his second in two. Oh, it's a rocket. Absolute rocket. Took time to get his feet sorted. Now they're so delicate, he can sell them on OnlyFans. What a strike. Very little to report in the second half. West Ham pushing for a winner, though. They've been the better team, to be fair. Mohamed Kudus has done absolutely brilliantly. Oh, it's just crazy, man. Both goals, so difficult to stop in this one here. That is crazy quick dribbling. The footwork on full display there. I mean, unbelievable. For the first and second goals, the pace, the agility, phenomenal. Oh, yes! This guy loves to come up clutch. He's done it again. What a fritter of finale. Oh, I would have been gutted to lose our first one here. Absolutely gutted. But what's that saying? And then over till it's over. Massive, massive. I'll have that battle back twice to claim. Now, that is the definition of a hard four point. It would have been so frustrating to lose our first one here at the death, man. Got to take that. I've got to be satisfied with it too. Could I get Calvin Phillips on loan? Do you reckon they'd uh, consider that, man? City? No, not interested at all. I can't afford those wages, not at all. Um, I think if it's not going to be Basuma, I'm looking mostly at these two here. Nicholas Dorsch from uh, Augsburg and uh, Nicola 
Moro as well. I'd say slightly stronger defensive stats on this guy here. Um, but also, where was uh, where, where is he? Oh, there he is. So on your dicker, he was also suggested as well. This guy, this guy, I think would be a fantastic pickup from Club Bruges. Hasn't moved on to a top five European league yet. Ninety one stamina. You know, I love that. He's he's definitely in contention. I think we'll play the Leicester game in the final one of the uh, the month, and then we'll uh, we'll think about it after that. Right, final game of August. Leicester right at the King Power, and therefore it only feels right. I make two changes for the lineup, including Mendes coming in and James Justin, ex Leicester man, making his second debut, returning to Luton Town. Let's get back to winning ways here in our first away day. Man, this be a tough old game. This is where like the the game sort of gets lost in the middle of the park. You know what I mean? Very poor, and it needs like a defence splitting foot of ball like that to open it up, you know. Right on cue, we've seen it. Mamadidi across, good tackle by Ballard, and we should get it away. Still no, no, it's been a tough one, this. And oh, I'm really not getting all the Alcaraz, man. I know it's only a second start for me, but I, I can't play a simple pass with a guy. Constantly giving it away. And this might result in a goal as well. It's going to, bars through. Oh, Murich, what a save. Gonna make the same treble change I did in the previous game where obviously Loder came up clutch with the leveller Barkley on as well and Carl up for that potential long throw in possibility as we're still tied at no no I probably take it all things considered but created nothing in this game we might get signed here because there's a lot of green for this man to run into and you know once he gets going he shouldn't be caught but he is but he's still got it Danny Oh, good save. Still a couple of corners, one in succession. Can we win this late here? I'd love it if we could. Gabe's delivery is decent. Up in the air. No, blocked. But one back. Cast. Oh, so close to his first loot and goal. Off the underside of the bar and cleared. Pushing for the win late. Can we get it? Can we get it? Danny Loader again. Is he going to drop in? Does is come off the bench and score late goals. He's done it again. This is ridiculous. It's all he does, man. Come off the bench and get me a late goal. I'll be honest, it's poor keeping, but we don't mind one bit. And I'm sure Danny's going to be saying to me in the dressing room at full time, I'll whisper it quietly to you, boss, whilst Elijah's got his AirPods in, but uh, I think I should start our next one. Oh, mate, what a pickup he's been on a free man. The amount of points he's won me in late games. Incredible. I can't believe this, man. If you take three of our last four games, continuing on from last season, Danny Lode has scored in the last five minutes of all of those three. <laughs> he single-handedly won me five points. Incredible. He's got his definition of clutch, mate. Yeah, certainly not the best bit of goalkeeping you'll ever see, but we're going to take it. Oh, no way. Well, I wasn't expecting this on deadline day, but it's going to be a one and done for Kieran. And I think if the Gunners come calling last year's runners-up, Champions League football, I, I, I don't think we can stand this way, really, can we? He's got to go. Yep, not what anyone wanted to see or was expecting on deadline day, but I don't think realistically we could stand in his way. £30 million and it's a one and done for KDH. He returned to Luton, but only briefly, and he's now off to the bright light to the Emirates playing in the Champions League. Good fee to be fair, 30 mil for one year's worth of service. And with our budget now rising to 56 million and needing someone to replace him, do you know what? If no one else is going to take him, I'm going to have him. Speaking of North London sides, well, he's moved to West London in the save, but he's not a championship level player, man. He's done so well so early on under Angie this season, and I'm not letting him stay in the second tier. He might be 30 now with some good experience added to our team. Basuma, come back to the Premier League. For 20 mil, that would be a bargain. Yeah, from Brighton to Spurs to now relegation with Brentford, I wasn't going to let him sit in the second tier. He's too good for that. He's come back to the Premier League and now he's going to the Europa League with Luton as well. And what I like as well is that even at 30 years old, he's not going to like rapidly decrease in rating like the old days of FIFA. He can still do a decent job and possibly even grow our rating as well. And guys, 30's not old. 30's not old. Believe me on that. I like that a lot. A great partner alongside Jashari too. And a good little senior in the dressing room at 32. 
And whilst we still have 33 million in the budget, I think I'm going to advance a few more hours and see if any more transfer offers come in. I might just save that cash for January though and see how we're looking. Because right now, a very good start. Seven points taken from nine. Don't really feel the need to make any uh, any big deals. Um, might just let this guy go to Mallorca, to be honest. He's only got the show and great potential tag. We've got plenty of other options there at CB. So... Yeah, I don't feel the need to do anything more drastic on uh, on Dead on Air. I think, I think we're going to be okay. Ah, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, we've just taken one of their CMs. Now they want to take one of ours. Uh, well, he only signed a new deal uh, last... Uh, no, in the summer, actually, didn't he? So I don't think that's realistic, really. He literally only signed an extension, like, four weeks ago. So, yeah, if that, if that came in last season, then maybe. But right now, probably probably not realistic. Well, as the young lad is off to Mallorca, uh, that now sees our budget rise even more. And, you know, we actually do have plenty of cash if we want to bolster our squad even more. And I know this is a name that I've seen dropped in the comments and suggested by you guys quite a few times. Raphael on your dicker. Never used this guy before, but again, I love that style and a medium-high work rate. And he's out of contract coming the end of the season, so available on a cut price deal. I'm, I'm going to go for it. So 19.5 mil accepted. <clears throat> and it looks as though we're going to get our second player from the Belgian Pro League in this summer window. First Wrenchy boy and now on your dicker. Well, I'll be honest, guys. I don't really know anything about this guy whatsoever. Other than the fact we just signed him from Club Bruce. So do let me know in the comments what's he like, what's his play style, etc. But I know I've got a lot of Nigerian fans. So hopefully you'll be pleased to see a Nigerian international coming in. Raphael on your dicker arriving from Club Bruce for a very cheap transfer fee and he, he looks like the ideal successor for Basuma as well as a DM I really like that I'd like to get the uh, the weak foot up slightly but already 91 stamina 83 strength really good defensive stats and he can pass the ball pretty comfortably too this could be a brilliant pickup thanks for suggestion guys yep I like that he can uh, he can learn under Basuma initially in the first year or two and eventually when Eves is ready to take a step back and come off the bench Raphael can step in and start alongside Jashari. So that'll do it for deadline day then. Five new signings to add to the three we made in the last episode. Villa want to take Mendes, but it's not enough time, guys. Should have sent the facts earlier. And he's going nowhere anyway. I like this guy's third choice centre half. So that'll do it. Deadline day comes to an end. And the top movers were, wow, look at that. Theo Hernandez off to Real Madrid for 112.3 mil. But they sold Camavinga to Inter and have sold Trent back to Liverpool. Didn't work out there at the Burner about he's now batter he's loved the most at Anfield for 76 million pounds I gotta say I'm happy with that window really solid window and you know in the last uh, last summer window I asked you guys to rate my transfer window how do you think we did mark it out of 10 I, I want you to do it again out of 10 what would you call this transfer window I I'll show you the full list of departures now we had well Jack Love going to New Yorker for a mil KDH to, to ask for 30 Good win to Houston Dino, 540 grand. Loaned out our Polish goalkeeper, Galini to Bournemouth. Uh, Nico to Milan, 32.5 mil. A couple of the youngsters leaving there on small deals as well. And as for the new signings, we had James Justin coming in, Basuma coming in, Onya Dicker, cast off on a free alongside Ortega and Vidigal as well. And of course, Divine for 30 million alongside Alcaraz for 25 million as well. Would you rate that window out of 10? To me, that was solid. I'd call that a 9 in my opinion. And we shall leave it there for today's episode, guys. So big fan of you watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I will return in the very next episode with more big Premier League games and our first ever games in European football as the Europa League group stage will get underway. Have a fantastic day. Much love. And I'll see you for the next one, a history-making episode very soon.